The Gator Television Network presents Florida Football, featuring the Gators of the University of Florida against the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers University. From Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands, it's the University of Florida Fighting Gators and the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. And Florida invading the Northeast for the first time since the early 1940s. Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Gallagher with Jim Yarbrough. We'll bring you all the action. Rutgers part of that big Eastern independent group of football schools. Let's get some of your thoughts, Jim, on this group. Well, they're looking for respect. You know, Rutgers, Temple, Army, and, of course, Penn State, who's traditionally the best team in the East, uh, are looking for, to uh, increase their reputation. One way to do that is to beat a powerful Southeastern Conference team. Uh, it's nice that the kids can play these interregional uh, matchups. You know, Octavius Gould was the only guy that made the trip that could leave the hotel and not get lost this weekend. <laughs> Most of us have never been north of Lexington. So it's great for these intersectional, uh, interregional uh, matchups, Jim. Well, what about today's game, an injury factor on both sides? Well, uh, Kerwin Bell did not make the trip. Uh, Z Jeff Zimmerman. All-American prospect to tackle is out with a pulled hamstring. Uh, Keith Williams is still limping in that defensive line, and Ricky Natil, we understand, has a sprained ankle. Uh, conversely, for Rutgers, they lost Joe Gagliardi, the quarterback that made that big comeback at Florida Field in the second half last year. He was a fifth-year senior. His career is over. He had a shoulder separation at Penn State last week, and they're starting Scott Ernie, and we're going to learn about Ernie uh, this afternoon. Well, Jim, you've played here in the Meadowlands and Giants Stadium when we, you were with the Lions. Let's get some of your thoughts about the surface and the playing area. Well, it's one of the prettiest stadiums in the country. There's chair back seats for every fan. It's a fan stadium. And for these kids to come to New York and play in the Big Apple, even though we're in uh, northernmost New Jersey, uh, it's a tremendous experience. And it's one of the nicest stadiums in the country. So uh, we're looking for a great ball game this afternoon. All right. We'll be back with a kickoff. But first, time out for these messages. Florida football is brought to you by Armstrong Carpets, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Florida, the Florida Orange Growers, also by Dairy Farmers Incorporated, Florida's milk producers, by First Union Bank of Florida, your Florida and South Georgia Ford dealers. Gatorade Thirst Quencher, Likes Meats, by Merrill Lynch, Scotty's, and by Sonny's Real Pit Barbecue. We're here at Giants Stadium in the Meadowlands, the University of Florida Fighting Gators, ready to take on the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, an interesting matchup. Last year, it was a tie. Florida lost the toss and will receive. Last year, the first meeting between the Knights and the Gators, and as we said, uh, that was a long afternoon for the University of Florida. Big comeback uh, by the Scarlet Knights last year, down 28-7. to They came back and actually had a great chance to win that football game. Uh, Incomplete pass in the final minute and a fumble preventing them from kicking the field goal. So the Gators are looking to uh, control that football this afternoon from the first whistle. Well, as we come in today, the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers are 3-1-1, one, and, one, and the Gators of Florida are 2-4. and four. The loss on the record coming to the Nittany Lions of Penn State, one of the top five teams in the country, or top six teams in the country, depending on which poll you uh, read. But anyway, uh, it was a big loss for them because they lost by close to 30 points. Yeah, and they were undefeated, you know, 3-0-1 going up uh, to Happy Valley, they call it, up in uh, Pennsylvania to play Penn State. And they came away with a defeat and uh, kind of took the wind out of their sails a little bit, but they had the, the week off uh, to regroup and get themselves ready to play the University of Florida this afternoon. Well, they're getting ready to uh, kick off in just a moment. And the kickoff man is Doug Giesler. A sophomore from Barrington, Illinois at 5'10", 170 pounds, number four. And you can see him uh, right now putting the ball down at the 35-yard line and ready to get boot away. I tell you, you don't want to sit in the sh shade this afternoon. It's about 20 degrees uh, cooler when you're out of that sunshine. 
If you're out in the sunshine, it is a beautiful day. Kerry Watkins will be the deep return man as you look at a lot of orange and blue. Probably over 10,000 Florida fans are here. And uh, talking with the president of the University of Florida, Dr. Kreiser, prior to the game, we remarked about how many Gator alums live up here in the northeastern United States. There is the kickoff. And it is going to go deep and will be taken by Watkins. And he is at the 15-yard line across the 20 and taken down at the 22-yard line. And taking him down is Tom Duffy for the Scarlet Knights. So the University of Florida Gators set up shop and they go to work. And Mr. Rodney Brewer will get to start his second game as a Gator. He was 13-15 of 15 for 230 yards versus... Kent State last week. Octavius Gould, Anthony Williams, Ricky Natiel, Eric Hodges, and Mark McGriff. And then the guys up front will be a little bit changed because it'll be Davis, Wright, McCarthy, Sims, and Williams. Jeff Zimmerman not making the trip due to an injury. And there's the first snap of the ball game. And the carry is going to go to Octavius Gould, the freshman from Browns Mills, New Jersey, as he gets to about the 24-yard line before George Bankos, 71, brings him down. There you're looking at the lineup for the Scarlet Knights across the uh, deep people, Twomley, Morrow, Baker, and Sean Washington. Ball spotted down at the 24-yard line. It'll be second down and call it nine for the Gators of Florida as Rodney Brewer, left-handed quarterback from Apopka High School, drops the throw and does, and it's complete to Anthony Williams coming out of the backfield, and Anthony Williams still on his feet. And he's across the 35 and almost to the 40-yard line, to the 39-yard line for the first down before he is brought down. The young man from Tampa Plant High School. Brought down by Baker and Plumley. Take that play action to uh, Gould. Dump the ball out in the flat to Anthony Williams, the big, powerful, strong fullback. This kid's about 6'3", 215, shows some running ability in the open field. So it's first down for the Gators as they go to work on the 39-yard line. They're still on their side of the midfield stripe. Eric Hodges is from Philadelphia, and the number 10 was the motion man. And the give-off was to Gould, and Gould is stacked up as the Scarlet Knights sniff that one out. Harry Swain, defensive tackle number 90, makes the hit a big senior at 6'5", 255. And we need to look out for number 41, Tyrone Stowe. They're all-American linebacker. They're very proud of uh, the way that young man plays football for the Scarlet Knights. He is their all-time leading tackler from Passaic, New Jersey. About 10 miles from the stadium here. It is Octavius Gould, as you can see, averaging 3.4 yards per carry on second down 10. And getting the call from the top of the eye, it's Gould. He's still on his feet. He's at the 40. He might bust it. He's at the 30. And inside the 30-yard line before he is finally taken down by Steve Twomley, who showed some foot speed in bringing Gould down. And, of course, a lot of Gould's family and friends are going to be here from Browns Mills in the middle of the state. Well, watch that offensive line. Jimmy Davis, Charlie Wright doing a great job. Now it's all Octavius Gould. Look at that little wrinkle right there he put on the safety. Plenty of talent in that young freshman tailback. Twomley showing some foot speed to drag him down, and it's a first down situation for the Gators at the 27-yard line of Rutgers as they drive on their Scarlet Knights. The give-off goes to Anthony Williams, and the young man from Tampa goes to the 20, between the 21 and the 22-yard line before he's brought down. Tom Duffy, defensive end number 36, the first guy to make contact for Rutgers. Generally in the Southeastern Conference, and especially at Florida Field, the heat is such a factor on these running backs uh, and their energy level. This afternoon, they're going to have plenty of gas in their tank in the fourth <laughs> quarter because it's nice and cool out there. It's a great day for a running back. Second and five at the 22-yard line for the Gators as they go with the eye. And the give goes to Anthony Williams. He's inside the 20 to the 19-yard line before Rutgers' Tyrone Stowe and Harry Swain combine to make the tackle. Harry, number 90, and Tyrone, number 41. Dick Anderson, career record 12-12-2. This is his third year at Rutgers. He and Florida coach Galen Hall were teammates at Penn State. He was an end and Galen Hall a quarterback. And I think Anderson caught over 20 passes from Galen Hall during their years together. Dick Anderson's staff here at Rutgers, uh, majority of his staff are, are Penn Staters. Third and two at the 19-yard line. The pitch is going to go to Gould, and he is hit and brought down at the 19-yard line. Stopped short of the first down by Darren Sellis, number 37. Darren Sellis did a terrific job right there. 
Watch the safety come up and meet Octavia School. He avoids the block of Anthony Williams, and the Gators looks like they're going for the three. Well, the football came loose, but it was recovered by the University of Florida, and that brings on Jeff Dawson, a senior from Lantana. His kick is going to come from the 26-yard line, so we're talking about a 36-yard attempt. Steve Ewing, number 13, will hold, and Bird will snap. His foot is into it. It's got the distance, and it looks to be good. Let's see. It is. The score, Florida 3, Rutgers nothing. We'll be right back. Yes, it is. Okay, I hear you. Top 20 and young number 22 for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, the return guys. As we get ready to kick off, John David Francis, the sophomore from Stark, Florida, will kick number five. And he gets ready to move to the football. The Gators have just put a field goal through the uprights. Jeff Dawson's kick was good. It's a squibber, a knuckleball, and it's going to be picked up at the 11-yard line by Young. He's across the 20, and he is up to the 28-yard line for an excellent return for the Scarlet Knights. So Eric Young makes the return, and Ferguson hits him and brings him down, along with James Massey for the University of Florida. And we see Scott Ernie with his offensive uh, support cast right there, Jim Gallagher. Ernie, this is his first start. Uh, he's a young sophomore for the Scarlet Knights. As we look at the offensive starters for the Knights, and moving to the football right now is their quarterback, Scott Ernie. Mike Dillon, the center, is up over the ball. The uh, tight end, Campbell, is to the left side, number 89. And the give-off is going to go to number 48, Curtis Stevens. And Stevens hits to about the 32 before he's brought down by big Rondi Weston, number 68. Williams, Roth, and Weston for the Gators. Moten, Armstrong, White, and Charlton, the backups across the line. Mulberry, White, Oliver, and Williams, the crunch bunch, the deep backs. Second and seven at the 32-yard line. The scoring drive, eight plays, 58 yards. Possession time, 354. Jeff Dawson's boot from 36 yards away is good. Scott Ernie from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania is the quarterback. Throws, and it is juggled in the air by Curtis Stevens coming out of the backfield. He's bumped out on the far side by Arthur White, and he's got the completion, so that's going to advance the football. This Curtis Stevens is a fine fullback. He leads the Scar Scarlet Knights in rushing, a little over 42 yards per game. It's unusual to see the fullback lead in rushing. Usually they give the ball to that tailback more often. but the That's right. Rutgers uses that fullback. He's a good talent. They've got a split backfield behind Ernie on third and four from the 35-yard line. They split receivers left and right. And the give is going to go to the tailback, Matt Prescott, and he rips it to the midfield stripe to get the first down for Rutgers as he gets through the Florida D. Adrian White finally brings him down, the strong safety. By the way, Jim and I will be picking our Mid-State Federal Player of the Game in the fourth quarter. Matt Prescott is the uh, second team tailback, actually, for the Scarlet Knights. Uh, Henry Henderson was starting at that position, but he's out with an injury. So That was a 15-yard gain. Moves that football right to the 50-yard line. The motion man is Cobb to the top of the screen, number 20, and the give off on the counter is going to go to Curtis Stevens, the fullback, but Florida was right there, and they just stacked him up. First guy to make contact, Jeff Roth, and then Scott Armstrong, the senior inside linebacker from Ocala Forest High School. Rutgers likes to control that football. They like to pick at you and peck at you and get the five yards, the three yards, small, uh, short time uh, passing game. Look, look to control that football. Keep it away from you. Second and nine on the 49. Rutgers has moved across the 50 into Florida territory as Scott Ernie, a sophomore 
Drops back to throw. He's got time and unloads long, and it is incomplete. It was intended for number 22, who was uh, deep, Eric Young, but it falls as incomplete. And Lewis Oliver was the coverage man there for the University of Florida Fighting Gators. Ernie gets plenty of time right here to look downfield, and Lewis Oliver breaks on the ball cleanly, and he's got it. Knocked away at the last second. Nice job, Lewis Oliver. That's what that safety is supposed to do. Play center field and then break on the ball. Well, he's an excellent athlete. Third and nine at the 49-yard line. Four down linemen for Florida. So they're in the nickel. The giveoff is to Curtis Stevens. And Stevens gets it to the 45-yard line before Arthur White, the inside linebacker, the junior from Cross Group, makes the hit. That brings up fourth down. That means that the Knights are going to have to kick away. And Matt O'Connell from Bethesda, Maryland, who is averaging over 42 yards per punt, will be the kicker. He was given the most valuable player award during the Penn State game. I think he had to kick over 10 times in that game. He's got the wind at his back right now, too. He might boom this one. He is waiting for the snap. Kerry Watkins would be deep for Florida. O'Connell boots it. He hits down and rolls into the end zone. So it'll come out to the 20-yard line. But a nice foot speed there by Darren Sellis, 37, who really got down in a hurry under the ball. Yeah, he tried to dive in that end zone and knock the ball back into the uh, playing field, but wasn't able to get there. So the Gators will have the ball on the 20. Let's see if they can put another drive on top of the first one that was so successful. Well, that was a 45-yard kick, so O'Connell has certainly been a weapon for the Scarlet Knights. First and 10 for the Gators at the 20-yard line as Rodney Brewer comes up behind Frank McCarthy. Massey and Anthony Williams are the running backs. And Wickman 20 in motion. The give off is going to go to Massey. Massey turns it upfield. He's to the 25 yard line before Derek Baker, the free safety 19, makes the hit for Rutgers. Massey 24 attempts, 76 yards in 86, 3.2 per carry. Stacy Simmons was in on that uh, last play for Ricky Natil, who's nursing a sore ankle, but Ricky's come back on the field right now for this play. Ricky just out of the left of your screen. I formation now as the Gators go on second and four at the 26-yard line. And the give off again is going to go to Massey, but he has stacked up. The Scarlet Knights really made a good defensive play as Doug Kokoski and the outside linebacker Alec Hope combined. Kokoski, that sounds like a tough name, doesn't it? He, yep. he played tough on that one. He did. No question. That was a bit of a trap action, and they weren't going to go for it, and they stuffed the play right at the line of scrimmage. He's 6 feet 240 from Cleveland, Ohio. Massey 42, and Wickman in a double slot to the right side as Rodney Brewer, 19, looks to throw, unloads, and he's got Wickman complete, and Wickman's to the 39-yard line. Flag on the play at the 30 as... Washington and Morrow combined to bring Wickman down. Good pressure being put on there by Harry Swain. The call is going to go against Rutgers, Looks like and there's Brett somebody Wickman. down. Brett might and be we'll be back with more, but first, time out for these messages. Well, we look at Rodney Brewer dropping back to throw. Brett Wickman had uh, Lewis Morrow... Man for man, Morrow was trying to coverage, cover uh, Brett, but uh, Brett sprinted across the center of the field, caught the football, but looked like he had the wind knocked out of him there for a minute. Dr. Pete Indelicato comes across with him. Massey and Williams are the running backs. Williams the up back, and dotting the eye is Massey as the give goes to James Massey, and he goes off the left side to the 43-yard line. So he picks up about three. It was first and ten off the 40. Tom Duffy, defensive end, and also Harry Swain, defensive tackle, making the contact for the Scarlet Knights. That'll bring up second down and six on the 44-yard line with 6.43 to play in the first quarter, and Florida up by a score of three to nothing. The Gators two and four on the year. The Scarlet Knights are three, one, and one. 
Nice end zone shot as we look at Massey 42 at the top of the eye and Brewer looking to throw and unloads long looking for Eric Hodges intercepted by Rutgers Steve Twomley number 21. So a good defensive play by Twomley makes the intercept. The intended receiver was Eric Hodges. Twomley's a 5'11", 180 pounder from Trenton, New Jersey. Now Rodney gets a little greedy right here trying to go deep for Hodges and Twomley just makes an outstanding play. The ball was underthrown a bit. Mark McGriff, the tight end, was wide open in the flat but Rodney didn't take the chance uh, to dump to him and was going for the home run. Well that gives the Scarlet Knights the football at the 20. It'll be first and 10. Scott Ernie at the quarterback position, a lone setback and a slot off to the right side. The give off is going to go to Curtis Stevens, the lone setback. He turns upfield for about three to the 23 yard line before Florida's Clifford Charlton and Adrian White combine on him. Stevens is a senior from Summerdale, New Jersey. Henry Brown still playing with a broken finger out there as a down lineman. Number 99, Big Henry from Fort Myers, Florida. A lot of Gators playing with uh, injuries, and injuries have certainly been a problem. Ernie at the quarterback spot on second and seven from the 23, and his give-off goes to Matt Prescott. Fumble. And Prescott fumbles the football as he is hit. Let's see who recovers when they unpile. Rutgers recovers. Scott Armstrong made the hit, number 57. Let's see who's going to strip. Scott Armstrong is going to make the... No, it was Henry Brown, I think, that knocked that ball loose, but Rutgers still comes up with it. There's Henry diving for the ball as well after he knocked it loose. As we look at Galen Hall, and a lot of Gators. Third and seven at the 23-yard line. Ernie to throw. And let's go long too far. It was intended for Roy Hoover, 34, and the coverage man was Lewis Oliver for Florida. So that brings up fourth down seven, punting situation at the 23 for the Knights. And once again, we look at Matt O'Connell. Nice job by the Gator defense. Uh, that uh, University of Florida offense should get excellent field position right now as Kerry Watkins is deep in center field to receive. O'Connell standing at the five. The line of scrimmage is the 23. Waiting on that deep snap. It's a cool northern fall day as Watkins takes it at the 33, moves to the 35, upfield at the 40, the 45, and taken out of bounds in front of the Rutgers bench at the 47-yard line. So the Rutgers special teams get down and do a good job. Sean Washington, number three, makes contact first. Well, the Gators are going to get good field position. Kerry Watkins returns just inside the Gator 48-yard line right now. Good field position for Rodney Brewer and his teammates. Steve Stipe doing a nice job blocking on that punt return. First and 10 at the 48-yard line for the Gators as Rodney Brewer goes with the eye and puts Ricky Natiel in motion 89. And the pitch is going to come to Gould. Gould trying to turn it outside, but the Knights take him down behind the line of scrimmage at the 45. Octavius Gould carrying the football, and Lewis Morrow, Tom Duffy, bring him down as they make penetration for the Scarlet Knights. Well, Lewis Morrow, the safety, has to come up and uh, contain on that play, and he does. He comes up and knocks Anthony Williams. Watch, uh, or is that Ferguson? Ferguson, the fullback. Lewis Morrow comes at and does a great job taking on that fullback and destroying that play. Dan McCarris also in on the tackle. Waiting for the snap is Rodney Brewer, and Brewer's give is going to go to Octavius Gould, and he is hit and brought down again at the 46-yard line by Tom Duffy and by Tyrone Stowe. Four minutes and two seconds left to play in the first quarter, and Florida is leading by a score of three to nothing. There's someone down. We'll be right back. Third and 12 from the 46-yard line. Rodney Brewer of the Gators to throw. He's got Octavius Gould. He's inside the 30 and inside the 25-yard line to the 23 before he is brought down by Derek Baker. 
So a nice play in front of the home fans for Octavius Gould as we look at that sea of orange and blue. Well, they have Octavius in the slot, and he's just going to beat the linebackers in their drop right there. All-American Tyrone Stowe cannot keep up with him. Octavius Gould was wide open. Rodney Brewer picked him out easily. A while ago, our injured player for Rutgers was Tom Duffy, number 36, a 6'4", 220-pound senior. He got up and went off under his own power. And right now, Sean Washington, number 3, is down. He's a 5'11", 190-pound junior and uh, hails from Washington, D.C. area. Well, you hate to see these injuries, but these kids get bigger and stronger and faster, and the game becomes more violent every year. And uh, the injury situation is just... uh it plays a big, big part. There's no question about that. By the way, Gator basketball is back. The team is ranked in the preseason top 20 in several publications for the first time ever. The first tip-off is next month, so order your tickets now from the Gator Ticket Office. Call toll-free in the state of Florida, 1-800-342-7851, or call 904-392-0664. First and 10 at the 23-yard line for Florida, leading 3 to nothing with 3.38 to play in the first period. Eric Hodges in motion as the pitch goes to Octavius Gould turning up to the near side to the 20-yard line, so give him three on the carry before Matt Bachman breaks him down along with Doug Kokoski. Kokoski doing a nice job pursuing right there, came across the line of scrimmage and helped chase Octavius Gould down from the behind. Sean Washington, three who was injured a couple of plays ago, has checked back into the lineup. Rodney is 3 for 4 for 61 yards this afternoon as the Gators are working off the 20-yard line and Rodney Brewer to throw. He hangs onto the football himself and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Harry Swain, number 90, brings him down. He's a defensive tackle for... The uh, Scarlet Knights from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Rodney had excellent protection there, but uh, give some credit to the coverage of the Scarlet Knight defense. No one was open, so he wisely ate the football. I think once you get burned on an interception, especially a young quarterback or a quarterback that doesn't have that much experience, he's going to be a little bit more cautious the next time he puts the ball in the air, and I think you saw that cautiousness right there. Rutgers deep backs have done a very good job when covering Florida's receivers. Third and ten off the 23 as Rodney's being chased and hangs onto it himself and turns up field and goes down at about the 17-yard line. Tyrone Stowe, the inside linebacker we talked about earlier, is the guy that uh, brought him down. We get the word now that Tom Duffy has a bruised elbow and will return. Snow on the blitz up the middle, but watch the speed. He's going to chase Rodney Brewer. Look at Stowe pursue Rodney Brewer. And he's finally going to make the tackle near the sideline. Nice job, Tyrone Stowe. Nice Field up. goal attempt by Jeff Dawson from the 23, a 33-yard attempt. And it is good. And so the Gators now lead by a score of 6 to nothing with 132 to play in the first quarter. As Dawson, the senior broadcast production major from Lantana, Florida, comes across field. Steve Ewing, the holder, and Walter Bird, the snapper. Well, Rutgers playing tough, but the Gators seem to be able to move the ball consistently, at least between the 30-yard lines, taking advantage of the leg of Jeff Dawson to put six points on the board. They'd rather get touchdowns, but those field goals will add up in a four-quarter ball game, that's for sure. Well, Jeff has been... Very, very consistent uh, with his toe in this his senior year. As we get ready to watch the kickoff, some of the uh, Rutgers people said that they're certainly glad that Florida brought so many fans with them today. I know the retailers are glad. <laughs> A lot of credit cards coming to uh, northern New Jersey and uh, New York City across the Hudson River. The Gator fans were hard to miss in their orange jackets going through Manhattan yesterday. And, um, of course, ev- ev- everything is orange and blue up here. Of course, it is coincidental that those are the Met colors. But seven plays, 36 yards, possession 319. Jeff Dawson's 33-yard field goal does the job. Yeah, I think there might be some stiff necks with some of those young players, too, looking up at those tall buildings. <laughs> Even Rondy Weston was impressed, and he's pretty big. 
It's going to go deep, and Young will take it at the 3. He's at the 5, the 10, the 15, across the 20, and up across the 25 to the 27-yard line before he is brought down by Tyrone McQueen and by Eric Young, the ball carrier. So the carry to the 27-yard line, it'll be first down and 10 now for the Scarlet Knights. And we have another injury, Jim Gallagher. These kids are really hitting out there this afternoon. I mean, they hit every Saturday, but uh, it seems to be a lot more injuries this afternoon. Well, it's one of the uh, Rutgers players. Number 70. Number 70. Getz. Offensive guard on special teams. Lee Getz. He's, he seems a, to be all right. He's also a starting offensive guard. He was in the wedge. Those guys take some vicious hits on kickoff returns. Probably got his bell rung. I think he'll probably be back. It'll be first and 10 at the 27-yard line. Scott Ernie to throw, and it is complete to the 32-yard line. Scott Armstrong and Arthur White make the hit on Bruce Campbell, the tight end, who caught the football. Well, use the fullback, use the tight end. Uh, we mentioned Rutgers is very patient right there. They let the fullback, excuse me, the tight end just get down with the inside linebackers and sit down in an open area, turn around and catch the football, and he got about a six-yard gain. So it'll be second and five from the 32 for the Scarlet Knights. The Gators going with the three-down lineman, and on the counter, Matt Prescott gets the call, and he is stacked up at the line of scrimmage, hit hard first by Jeff Roth. A uh, big sophomore from Seminole, Florida. Down in Pinellas County. Jeff Roth throws the uh, blocking attempt by the center away so rapidly right there. He's in the backfield before the back even approaches the line of scrimmage. Jeff Roth using his quickness to make that hit in the backfield. 6'4", 252. Third and six from the 31-yard line. A split backfield behind Scott Ernie. And he is looking to throw and does. And it is complete to number 22 out in the flat, Eric Young. Right in front of the Rutgers bench. Eric Young, the leading receiver for the Scarlet Knights with 17 receptions coming into this ball game, Runs a simple out route along the, line of, along the sideline. Kerry Watkins knocking him out, but not before he got the first down. At the 40-yard line. And the Knights splitting receivers left and right. They go with the I formation. And Scott Ernie looks at the Gator D. And the giveoff is going to go to the tailback, Prescott. And he rips it up the middle to uh, the cross the 45-yard line before Rondi Weston, the sophomore right tackle from Belglade, makes the tackle at the 47. That is the end of the first quarter, and we'll be back with more. But first, let's take time out for these messages. as we look at a pretty Gator fan in the stands and there are probably 10,000 of them that have made the trek northward or live in this area and have come out for the game today. An excellent representation for the University of Florida in the northeastern United States. Second down and three from the 47-yard line for the Knights as they drive on the Gators. The wide side for them would be to the left and they put the tight end Bruce Campbell to the left side. A lone setback and they're working off this slot and the give is going to go to the uh, fullback, and he hits it right up the middle. That is Dan Lipset. Stacked up by Florida, so they were able to diagnose that. Arthur White, inside linebacker for the Gators, is the first guy to make the tackle for the orange and blue. Rutgers, not a strong running team. Uh, they're getting about 200 yards uh, a game out of their passing uh, ball game, and they usually run for around 100 yards, so they're not real strong on the ground with the running attack. Big Clifford Charlton there, third and three at the 47-yard line for the Scarlet Knights, and somebody jumped. Well, 
It looked like Bruce Campbell, 89, came off on the left side at the tight end spot. I won't give you a social security number, but I think he's definitely the guilty party. And he was about 20 yards in the secondary when they finally caught him and told him to come back. Galen Hall, and he's enjoyed this trip back up to the northeastern United States. He was a star quarterback at Penn State. Had a great career there. Went to three bowl games. Dick Anderson, he and Galen teammates at Penn State in 1961. Third and eight on the 42-yard line now. Florida with the four down linemen, so they're in the nickel. As Ernie waits for the snap. Drops the throw, and it is complete to the tight end. Campbell, but he is down at the 40 seven-yard line. Bruce Campbell, the junior at 6'4 and 225, makes the catch. Nice job, nice hands. Anytime you go down on that knee in college football, it's an immediate whistle. He wasn't tackled, but he, his knee did go down. Watch Campbell in the center of your screen. Good protection up front. Matt Prescott doing a nice job picking up the blitz. Big Campbell, the receiver. Picks up the first down. He thought he was playing for the Giants for a moment. Hop back up. First and ten at the 47. As Scott Ernie looks to unload and does. Goes long and it is incomplete. It was intended for Roy Hoover who was running a fly off the right side. Getting good coverage there from Kerry Watkins. And also not too far away was Adrian White. The strong safety. So the Gator D was right there. Well, that strong safety or the safety better not be too far away on those plays. That's exactly what he's supposed <laughs> to do. That's his job. Help that corner back out. Second and ten on the 47-yard line of Florida for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers as they drive in the early moments of the second quarter here at Giants Stadium in the Meadowlands. With the eye formation and wait for the snap as the young sophomore quarterback, his give off is going to go to Matt Prescott who... Takes it to the 44-yard line, but absorbs some punishment before he gets there. Pat Moore, inside linebacker, a freshman from Pensacola Escambia High School, making the tackle. So with the line of scrimmage, the 44, it's third and seven. 13 minutes and 15 seconds to play in the first half. And the Knights will probably put the ball in the air on this play. Let's see if the Gators come with a blitz or drop back in coverage. Ernie's 4 for 7, 28 yards, and he does drop the throw, and does, and he's got his man, Eric Young. It is complete to the 34-yard line for the first down. Combining to make the tackle, Ricky Mulberry and Dwayne Glover. That's a little bit of a drag route. The Gators rush four men. They wait for Eric Young to drag across the middle, let those linebackers drop back, and then here he comes dragging across the middle underneath those linebackers and you then uses his speed and running ability to pick up the first down eric young the leading receiver for the scarlet knights line of scrimmage is the 34 yard line as campbell 89 makes the move from right to left at the tight end spot a split backfield behind ernie and the give off is going to go to dan lipsett and lipsett gets it inside the 30 yard line before he's brought down by henry brown and pat moore they're going to spot it down between the 27 and 20, or 28 and 29 yard line. A lot of patience by Rutgers on offense. Draws, drag routes, 10 yard out routes. They don't get greedy. Second and five of the 29 on the flanker reverse. A fumble and a loose ball. Let's see who's going to come up with it. Ron Moten had a shot at it, Jim Gallagher, but it looks like he didn't pick up the fumble. Brian Cobb was the guy that dropped it on the flanker reverse, and the Scarlet Knights recover their own fumble. As you say, Moten was right there to make the play and didn't get the ball. He saw that reverse coming from the snap. He was ready to make the play, and then he saw the ball on the ground, and he went for it like a shot, but he overruns the football. Now it's up for grabs. Watch Ron Moten. He sees it, but, oh, my goodness, he rolls right over the top of it. So the Scarlet Knights avert disaster. It's third and 11 at the 35-yard line. They go with a slot to the right side, a lone setback, and here's Ernie to throw and does, and it is incomplete. It was intended deep for Matt Prescott out of the backfield, and Lewis Oliver was the coverage man, and Lewis really unloaded on him. 
Yeah, Prescott had passed by the linebackers. The ball hung up a little bit too long, and Lewis Oliver was waiting to make the hit. Fake punt. Fake punt. And running with the football is Derek Baker, who is the holder, and he was hit and brought down by Florida. The Gators knew what they were doing. Ron Moten was right there to make the first hit, and there's a little bit of a dispute going on in the field. I tell you, that was an excellent play by Jerry Anderson's uh, specialty team. Ron Moten was very alert. That whole Gator defense was alert. Rutgers trying to uh, pull the trick run on the uh, punting situation, but that Gator defense or that Gator specialty team was was ready for that one. That's using your head. You use your body all afternoon, but once in a while you got to use your head yeah. as well, and they were very alert. First and 10 at the 34, I formation for the Gators. They're operating in their own territory. Pitch goes to Gould, and he's trying to turn it, but he has stopped as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Couldn't turn the corner there as Harry Swain moves in the defensive tackle for the Scarlet Knights. Rutgers doing a nice job swarming on that football. Well, we were impressed with them last year. They were a well-coached football team that took advantage of opportunities down at Florida Field. It was kind of an overcast day, which was really more their kind of football weather early on and resulted in that 28-28 tie. Rodney Brewer waiting for the snap now off the eye formation with the slot off to the right side. And Brewer gives this time to Gould, who gets the call and goes to the 40-yard line. So Octavius responds with a nice carry. Matt Bachman and Tyrone Stowe, the inside linebacker. Stowe is the leading tackler of all time for the Scarlet Knights of Ruskers. Octavius, nine carries for 41 yards already in the first half. Ten minutes and eight seconds to play in the second quarter. And Florida leading by a score of six to nothing. Slot to the right side as Rodney Brewer, the left-handed quarterback with a lone setback. And Brewer throws, and he's got Natil, and Natil cannot hang on to the football. Remember, he is coming off an injury, and he is just being spot-played today. Well, they caught Rutgers in the zone defense, and Ricky was going to split the zone with that post route, and he was hit right in the numbers but did not come up with a catch. Uh, Rodney Brewer... Excellent pass right there. Natil was just not able to come up with a football. Fourth and four is the situation. The ball is at the 40. It means punting. Jamie McAndrew, 30 punts, averaging a little over 40 yards per boot, will kick. He's the son of former Mets pitcher Jim McAndrew. And he gets it off nicely. It bobbles a little bit. It's going to be taken by Cobb, and he is drilled as he touches the ball. And there's a flag on the play. Stacy Simmons, number 28, was the guy that hit him for the University of Florida. Well, I think they might uh, flag Stacy Simmons for getting uh, in the receiving zone of the receiver before he had a chance to catch the football. Let's see where the ball comes down right there. Stacy makes a great hit. There was no signal for the fair catch. But I think they're uh, flagging him for getting there too early, but it looked like he timed his hit perfectly. It was against Florida, and it moves the football to the 29-yard line now for Rutgers. They're in their own territory. They have it first and 10, so they've got good field position. The Gators leading 6 to nothing with 9.42 to play in the first half. Scott Ernie looking at the Gator D. Gators going with three down linemen. Now four, and the give-off is going to go to Prescott, and Prescott rips it to the 39-yard line before he is hit and brought down. Flag on the play back at the 30. Lewis Oliver makes the tackle. It is against the Gators. They'll probably decline that one since he picked up uh, close to eight or nine yards. Matt Prescott doing a nice job on the... On the run here, the trap action, freeing him at the line of scrimmage. He's in the secondary like a flash. Finally, Lewis Oliver making the hit, but not before he approached the first down marker. There's an official timeout now. Don't get mad, Gators. Get even. Dick Anderson, we might mention the Rutgers coach. The name Dick Anderson probably very familiar to uh, a lot of Florida football fans who remember... A great defensive back who later served in the state legislature and has been a very successful businessman, but they are not one and the same. 
This is Rutgers Dick Anderson, I guess we should call him. It's a first down for the Scarlet Knights and 10 at the 39-yard line. As their center, Dillon is up over the football. Slot to the left side with receivers left and right and a lone setback and getting the call on the carry is the fullback, Curtis Stevens, and Stevens gets good yardage for the Knights as he moves it up to about the 40... Let's see where they're going to spot it down. They're going to spot it down at the 47-yard line. Henry Brown makes the tackle. Stevens, a very impressive senior, 6'2", 200 pounds, got outside. Anytime those running backs get outside, they're exceptionally dangerous. Second and two at the 47-yard line. High formation now for the Scarlet Knights. Mike Body, 31, checks in. He dots the eye and carries the football off the left side, and he's got the first down for Rutgers. Body, a sophomore at six feet and 200 pounds. Middle of the Florida forward wall takes him down. And the Scarlet Knights have got a drive going here as they pick up another first down. 8.28 to play in the first half. Florida with two field goals, 36 and 33 yards by Jeff Dawson, leads Rutgers. Last year they played to a 28-28 tie at Florida Field. Gators with the three down linemen. Linebackers in the gaps and the give off goes to Curtis Stevens. They stack him up right at the line of scrimmage. Jeff Roth, the first guy to tackle him for Florida. The winning attitude starts with individual performance combined with a strong team morale. Mid-State Federal Savings and Loan admires his spirit and is proud to be the exclusive sponsor of the Most Valuable Player of the Game Award, which will be announced at the conclusion of today's game. Mid-State Federal is Florida's full-service financial center. Second down and 10 on the 50-yard line now for Rutgers. As the Florida D digs in, and Rutgers trying to keep their drive going. Ernie throws. It is complete to Brian Cobb, who is drilled after a two-yard gain to about the 48 by Ron Moten. Again, the Scarlet Knights trying to sneak a receiver across that middle. Cobb that time getting uh, hit rather severely, I would say, by Ron Moten. Ron doing a nice job. Boy, he licks his chops when he sees those receivers coming at him full speed. Third down and eight on the 48. Rutgers is four for seven in third down conversion. Cobb doing a nice job just to hold on to that football. Caught two touchdown passes thus far this year. Slot offense to the right side as Ernie goes to throw. He's under some pressure. Florida takes him down behind the line of scrimmage. It is Jason Lambert. The freshman outside linebacker from Jacksonville Terry Parker High School who takes him down and gets the sack. Jason Lambert, a very impressive uh, outside linebacker. 6'4", 229. He's done a terrific job for the Gators all year long. Watch big Jason come in right here, making the hit on Ernie. A sack. Fourth and four at the or fourth and fourteen at the forty-six yard line as O'Connell kicks and does he sail one? Kerry Watkins watches it go out of bounds at the fourteen yard line. So no return on that. And Florida takes over the football. So you can see why O'Connell might have got a most valuable player award after the Penn State game. Ten punts, I think, against Penn State, averaged over 42 yards. This time he pins the Gators inside their own 15-yard line. He's done his job. Six minutes and 16 seconds to play in the first half. Florida leading by a score of six to nothing. They have just taken over the football, and here they come. As Rodney Brewer, who has gone all the way at the quarterback spot, goes with the eye formation. He gives off to Gould, and Gould at the 15-yard line. Short gain on the play, and brought down first by Alec Hoke, outside linebacker, who is from Princeton, New Jersey, a senior at 6'2 and 235. Cedric Smith now in at uh, fullback for the Gators. Uh, Rutgers seems to be doing a nice job controlling that line of scrimmage, and they seem to be getting more confidence here late in the second quarter. Second down and eight on the 16-yard line with receivers left and right right now for the Gators. The eye formation as Brewer throws, hits his tight end, Rodney Jones, the sophomore from Tampa plant, incomplete. 
the Gator tight ends again having problems holding on to that football. You have to use your tight end if your offense is going to be effective. You can't uh, depend on your fullback exclusively to catch those short possession receptions. So you have to have a tight end that can catch the ball for you consistently. Three for six with two drop balls this afternoon. So Rodney playing well. Third and eight at the 16-yard line. They give off to Octavius Gould, and he is hit at the 15. Tyrone Stowe makes the tackle on Octavius Gould. Now we're seeing the All-American caliber of Tyrone Stowe, number 41, shutting down that draw. And that brings on. The punting unit, fourth and eight from the 16, the official situation, and Jamie McAndrew from Parker, Colorado, has had one kick this afternoon for 36 yards, waits for the snap. Ten minute, the line of scrimmage looks like they're going for the block. No, they're going to drop back. He sails one, comes down at the midfield stripe, and is taken there by Brian Cobb, and Cobb run out of bounds in front of his own bench, but not before he gives the Knights good field position and they're just outside the 40-yard line of Florida. And it was Todd Gatlin making the hit. Now this is the best opportunity of the afternoon for the Rutgers uh, Scarlet Knight offense. Across the 50-yard line, great field position. Their defense has been playing well, and they've moved the ball rather consistently on offense. They just haven't been able to get in that end zone. First and 10 at the 44-yard line now for the Knights. And Scott Ernie goes to work at quarterback. He's got the eye formation with uh, Stevens as the up back. And the pitch is going to go to the trailing back. Matt Prescott comes to the near side. But he's swarmed under by the Gator D. They really diagnosed that one. Scott Armstrong was the first guy to say hello. Scott Armstrong did make the tackle, but Ron Moten made that play possible. He got outside leverage on the blocking back. Made the running back turn inside where the linebacker, Scott Armstrong, could make the tackle. That's how your defense is supposed to work. You'll see your inside linebackers leading in tackles, mainly because the outside linebackers are turning everybody to the inside. Second and eight at the 42-yard line. Split backfield behind Scott Ernie. He throws, and it is complete to Matt Prescott. The fullback, but he is stacked up as he catches the football. Pat Moore, the inside linebacker, makes the tackle for the Gators. Kerry Watkins also in on the hit. Pat Moore continues to impress. Outstanding young linebacker, freshman from Pensacola, Scambia. Well, there's two guys from Pensacola combining as uh, Kerry Watkins went to Pensacola Woodham. Third and four. At the 38-yard line for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. And Scott Ernie looking at the Florida D. Florida with the four down lineman. And the give off is on the counter is going to go to Curtis Stevens. He gets to the 35 yard line before he's brought down. But there was a flag on the play. Pat Moore and Scott Armstrong make the tackle for the Gators. I think the uh, call is going to go against the Scarlet Knights. It is for holding. And so that's going to pin him back. Watch Pat Pinner break loose on the inside. There's big Pat right there, and I think he's going to get... Well, you don't see the holding indicated right there, but it was called. He was trapped. Albert the Alligator made the trip all the way up here. This is chilly for Albert, though. It's chilly for Jim and Jim. Galen Hall grew up in this kind of weather. He's on... The sidelines and shirt sleeves. He's tough, isn't he? <laughs> yep, sure is. Third down, 14 on the 48-yard line for the Knights. As his center, Dillon, is up over the football, and they go with a slot offense to the right side. Scott Ernie with the lone back, Stevens behind him, looking to throw, and he is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Loose ball on the field, and they say that Rutgers recovers. Clifford Charlton, the outside linebacker, was the guy that really wreaked the havoc there. And so they recover, but that brings up fourth down. Clifford Charlton on the bottom of your screen, just working on the offensive tackle, gets that leverage and speed. The tackle was standing too tall right there. Clifford Charlton got underneath him and continued to press, press, press toward that quarterback till he came up with a sack. 
Fourth and 21 at the 43. O'Connell is the punter, and he gets it off. There was a flag on the play, and the ball is going to roll down across the 20 and down and right at the 11-yard line, which really pins him down. But there's a flag on the play, and we'll be back with more. But first, time out for these messages. Well, Loden Fair catches the football at the 32-yard line to give Florida very good field position. The reason we had to come back and kick over was there was a penalty, a five-yarder, which went against Rutgers. And so here's the replay of the kick by Matt O'Connell, and then Loden stands and waits for the football, number 30, and Fair catches it wisely, and that gives Florida great field position. Anthony Williams and James Massey, the running backs in for Florida. They're going, though, with the lone setback. And throwing out into the flat to Eric Hodges is Rodney Brewer. And Hodges bumped out in front of the Gator bench. And taking him out for the Scarlet Knights was Darren Sellis. Two minutes and 16 seconds to play in the second quarter. And the Gators are leading by a score of 6 to nothing by virtue of two field goals. Eric Hodgers runs a little bit of a flare route from his slot position there. They're hoping that the linebackers will drop off from that line of scrimmage far enough to give him some running room. But he's only able to pick up about two yards right there. So it's second down eight on the 34 as Hodges goes in motion. And again, Brewer looks to throw and goes long. He's going deep for Simmons, who was deep downfield. But it goes as incomplete. Twomley and Baker were the deep backs covering for Rutgers. Stacy Simmons with a lot of sp speed trying to split the gap between the cornerback and the safety right there. Uh, Ricky Natiel is being spot played because he, is, uh, he has been injured, so it is an effort for him to be there. Courageous young man. Third and eight at the 34-yard line as Frazier, one, splits to the left. Double slot would be to the right side with a lone setback. And Rodney Brewer being chased, rolls out of the pocket. Looks downfield, comes crossfield, and is going to hang on to the football and gets to the 42-yard line before Tyrone Stowe makes the tackle. Well, Stowe's an excellent player. <laughs> he is very, very active, as the uh, pro scouts like to say. Jamie McAndrew, two punts for 33-yard average this afternoon. Fourth and three at the 38. A minute 42 to play first half. As McAndrew... Gets it off. It's a little bit wobbly, and it's going to hit down, and it will take a Rutgers bounce back to the 40-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 for the Scarlet Knights. So once again, they wind up with good field position on that kick. Rutgers it, doing a nice job defensing the Gators. The Gator offense cannot uh, move consistently in this first half, and Rutgers is staying in this ball game, six to nothing. University of Florida lead. 129 to play as we look at Galen Hall. In his third year as head coach at Florida, 19-5-1. Winning percentage of 78%. And Ernley goes long and it is incomplete. It was intended for Brian Cobb, who was running a fly pattern deep off the right side. Clifford Charlton really putting the pressure on Ernie before he unloaded the football yeah they literally almost tackled uh, Clifford Charlton again there on his pass rush coming from the outside he's a tough young man to stop he's got that great ability to get underneath the, the offensive tackle and use the leverage to push toward the quarterback and with that great speed he can really push in a hurry second and ten at the 39 yard line as Ernie looks to throw and he's under pressure from Clifford again. Throws to Stevens on the safety valve. And they're going to pick up good yardage. And he is into Florida territory before he's brought down at the 45-yard line by Jarvis Williams. A junior right corner from Palatka. Timeout, Curtis. Rutgers. It's a screen. It's a screen, actually. Ernie is going to set up. Okay, we'll be right back after this.
First and 10 off the 44-yard line for Rutgers. Scott Ernie, the quarterback, and he is going to throw under some pressure. Let's go. It is complete along the sideline. No, they say he was out of bounds when he caught the football, and Clifford Charlton was the guy putting the pressure on, and the receiver was Eric Young, number 22. So an incomplete pass as... Um, Florida gets a little bit of a break on that. Ernie was 8 for 13 before for 60 yards before that last pass. So now he is 8 for 14. Jim, it looks like at this point in time, Jeff Roth and Clifford Charlton are in strong running for our votes as the player of the game. Second and 10 from the 44-yard line for Rutgers. 106 to play first half. And the give-off is going to go to the fullback straight up the middle and gets the first down to the 32. And that's Matt Prescott carrying the ball. Number 29, Matt brought down by Lewis Oliver, the 6'3", 213-pound sophomore from Belglade. On the lag draw, Rutgers doing a nice job getting the linebackers blocked. Another first and we'll down. be back with more, but first, time out for these messages. First and 10 from the 31-yard line. Scott Ernie, the quarterback for, Pen for Rutgers, throws, and it is incomplete out in the flat. It was intended for Eric Young, who was out there. Ron Moten, senior outside linebacker, doing a great job defensively for Florida, had dropped off on the play and was right there with him. So that brings up second down, 10. 54 seconds to play in the first half. Florida leading Rutgers by a score of 6 to nothing here at the Meadowlands. Ron Moten playing an excellent ball game on defense for the Gators. First downs, Rutgers leading 8-4. to four. Scott Ernie, their quarterback, being chased now again by Rondi Weston. And let's go, and it is complete to the 28-yard line to Curtis Stevens, number 48. And Jeff Roth makes the tackle. Second and eight, excuse me, third and eight. One timeout remaining. 35 seconds to play in the first half. Ernie to throw and does, and it is intercepted by Florida. The Gators have intercepted Arthur White. Number 43 makes the interception, and Florida gets the football. Now those inside linebackers have to get depth on their pass drop, and Arthur White did an excellent job right there. Ernie, who's done a nice job all afternoon with the passing game, this time tries to go into an area where there's Two or three Gators, and Arthur White comes up with the interception. Looks like Lewis Oliver was in the coverage there as well. First and 10 at the 22-yard line for the Gators with 28 seconds to play in the first half. Inside linebacker Arthur White from Frostproof. The give-off is going to go to the up-back Anthony Williams, the ball carrier, and Doug Kokoski makes the hit. 18-17. Looks like the Gators might be content here just to run the clock out and... Take that six to zip lead in at halftime. Well, the football has moved to the 27-yard line, and the seconds are ticking away, and they're coming out very, very slowly, so that looks like the philosophy, and that is the end of the first half of play. Florida leading by a score of six to nothing on two field goals of 36 and 33 yards by Jeff Dawson, and... Thus far, the ball, as you say, Jim, has moved up and down the field between the 30s. It's kind of like two big heavyweight fighters that are punching away at each other, but um, nobody can seem to make a big breakthrough. Well, both teams uh, seem to have the ability to move the ball and eventually score. We believe that will eventually happen because of the productivity we've seen thus far, but 
right now those defenses are keeping the folks out of the end zone. So the end of the first half, the Florida Gators leading the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers by a score of 6 to nothing. as you look at a lot of the Gator fans who have come up here for this game today. And, of course, there are a lot of Gator alums in the area as um, Brett we Wickman, I watch think. Brett Wickman coming off the field, and it looked like he had his arm in a sling. That's too bad for the senior. Well, he's had a he's great career here. And we'll be back with a halftime, but first we're going to take time out for these messages. It's halftime at the Meadowlands, and the Florida Gators are leading the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers by a score of 6 to nothing. as we get ready to begin the second half of play. It's been a first half that's been, I think, probably frustrating for both teams, Jim Yarbrough. Not a lot of production in terms of points and uh, not a whole lot of consistency on offense, but I think you have to credit the defenses to that. As you see some of the stats, the Gators uh, with 63 yards passing, Rutgers with 62 yards passing a little over 120 yards total offense for Rutgers a little over 130 yards 136 yards actually total for University of Florida right now uh, both teams looking for some offense we got the word that Brett Wickman is out possibly for the entire season yeah that's a shame uh, Brett the fifth year senior uh, doing an excellent job when he gets an opportunity to catch that football and uh, looks like he is out for the year this telecast of Gator football is being seen by fans all over the state of Florida and the United States. No matter where you are, we'd like to hear from you. Send us a card or a letter with a self-addressed stamped envelope, and we'll send you a Gator bumper sticker and a Gator keychain. Your comments are also welcome. Send your card or letter to the Gator Television Network, Post Office Box 14485, Gainesville, Florida, 32604. Now we believe Brett Wickman has a broken arm, Jim. And, uh... That's a pretty serious injury. It looks like uh, his career at the University of Florida might be over. As we start the third quarter, again, that first series of uh, the second half, very critical to both teams, and Rutgers will have the football. You know, they're looking for offense. Uh, they might want to establish something right now. So a lot of pressure on the Gator defense to shut Rutgers down early. And also Rutgers, conversely, wants to get in that end zone and take the lead. John David Francis will be kicking. A lot of Gator fans have made the trip to the Meadowlands. And, of course, as we mentioned earlier and at the halftime, there are a lot of Gator alums that uh, live and work in this northeastern area and have come down for the game today. Now, Gal Galen Hall, uh, Jim Gallagher mentioned early in the year about the, the depth situation at the University of Florida this year, and now the injury is starting to take their toll. Kicking off is John David Francis. It's going to go to Eric Young. He takes it at the goal. He's at the 5, the 10, the 15-yard line, and steps out of bounds here along the near sideline at the 19-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for the Scarlet Knights as their quarterback, Scott Ernie, goes to work, a sophomore from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Been very impressive this afternoon for a young man. 9 of 17 for 62 yards, one interception. He came in because of an injury situation, as did Rodney Brewer. Well, impressive when you consider it's his, really his first start as a college ball player. He played some in the second half against Penn State, but the game was already out of control two weeks ago. But this is his first shot at the big time, so to speak. He's shown a lot of poise. They go now with a split backfield behind him. Off the 19-yard line, and the give-off goes to Matt Prescott on the counter and he goes to the 20 so if he picked up a yard it was a tough one because Scott Armstrong and Pat Moore really handed out some punishment oh my goodness uh, Scott Armstrong's now on the turf uh, don't tell me we have another injury we're just into the third quarter and Florida's leading six to nothing we'll be right back but first these messages Second and eight on the 21, rolling is Ernie. He throws it, is incomplete. 
It was intended for Matt Prescott, the fullback, but goes as incomplete on a play action. Todd Gatlin is now in at the linebacker spot for Scott Armstrong, and Scott is being talked to by trainer Chris Patrick and the chief physician, Dr. Pete Indelicato, for the University of Florida, and the way that he's walking around and so forth, I can expect to see him back very shortly. Yeah, it looks like a bruised shoulder. Todd Gatlin doing a nice job as a substitute. Big Todd from Fort Walton, Chuck Tawachi High School. Third and eight at the 21-yard line as Ernie looks at the Florida D. Ernie's got the time to throw, rolls out, and under some pressure, throws intercepted by the University of Florida by Adrian White. And White comes out of bounds along the near sideline as Eric Young, 22, brings him out. Keith Williams and Clifford Charlton putting that pressure on, making Ernie unload the football, and we have got a scramble on the field as the coaches are out there getting the players off. Now that's not going to do anybody any good. you got to uh, save your energy and use it when the, the ball is in play. You can get plenty of times in the second half to get your hits in. Right now uh, both teams losing their poise a little bit on the interception. Scott Ernie just gave that ball up, uh, showing uh, a bit of his inexperience right there. And Adrian White just literally had the ball flutter right down in his chest. It looks like Adrian White was actually the receiver. There's a couple of flags down on the play. Let's take a look at that one again. All right, Ernie has uh, some time. Now he's going to get some pressure from Clifford Charlton. There's Keith Williams putting pressure on Scott Ernie, and he just throws the ball right away to Adrian White. Adrian's standing there all by himself. Big turnover, tremendous field position for that eight Gator offense. Now Rodney Brewer and his teammates have to take control at that line of scrimmage and get the ball in the end zone. Adrian is a senior from Orange Park High School in Orange Park, Florida, near Jacksonville. The Florida Gators with possession of the football. They are at the 24-yard line. It is first and 10. We had offsetting penalties, so the ball remains right there. Octavius Gould is the ball carrier and goes to the 20-yard line. So Octavius Gould, who comes from Browns Mills, New Jersey, south of here, gets the carry. A lot of his uh, backers are here, family, friends, uh, people who saw him play in high school. Gator fans in the Northeast. First true freshman to start for Florida since Neil Anderson in 1982. Second down and six on the 20-yard line as Octavius gets four yards. And Octavius gets the carry again. And he is inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. Harry Swain and Tyrone Stowe for Rutgers. Make the stop. 13 minutes and 33 seconds to play in the third quarter. Florida with a 6 to nothing lead. Gould, 13 carries for 52 yards this afternoon. High formation, Ricky Natiel has checked in and splits to the left. Rodney Brewer throws and it is incomplete. It was... Alec Hoke was the guy that put the pressure on. It was intended for Anthony Williams, the fullback, but goes as incomplete. Hoke, the outside linebacker on the blitz right now, getting to Brewer, and Brewer had no one to dump the football off to. Nice job by that uh, Rutgers defense. Fourth and four as we look at Jeff Dawson, and the kick will come from between the 24 and the 25-yard line, so it'll be a 35-yard attempt. And he gets his foot into it, and it is good. And so Florida has taken the lead. Wait, flag on the play. There's been a flag on the play. Roughing the kicker. And it's against the Scarlet Knights. My goodness, I didn't see it. Uh, perhaps we'll pick it up on the replay, but they're indicating that the kicker was roughed, and uh, the Gators will get a first down. The Gators will refuse... I believe they might give the three points up and should be a first down for the Florida offense. Yeah, they're going to get the first down right now. It is roughing the kicker. It's against Rutgers. <laughs> and it was declined. And they are going to take the three points. And so the score now is Florida 9. And the Charlotte Knights of Rutgers nothing. 13 minutes and 9 seconds to play in the third quarter. And we'll be right back.
So we're back waiting for the uh, kickoff and the penalty was assessed on the kickoff so that means Florida will kick off from the 40 yard line. Florida gets the points. It was not an automatic first down. Yeah, I, was getting, Young are deep. I was getting confused with a professional rule where you rough the kicker and you can pick up the first down. Evidently in college it's strictly a dead ball foul. Right and so it's not a first down so they take the points and they get the five yards in the kickoff and John David Francis will kick it off from the 40 yard line as he kicks it way way deep and going down to one knee in the end zone Eric Young Brian Cobb number 20 um, was there along with him so that means that the football is going to come out to the 20 and it'll be first and 10 for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers as we look at Scott Ernie Jeff Dawson's 35 yard field goal three plays seven yards possession time one minute and 12 seconds puts Florida on the board once again and they're up nine to nothing. They split backfield behind Ernie. He splits Young way out wide to the right. They go with a slot off to the right side. And the give off is going to go to Curtis Stevens. Comes to the near side and he is hit and brought down by Pat Pinner of the University of Florida. Big Pat, a junior from Lakeland Kathleen High School. Watch Pat Penner fight across the line of scrimmage, defeat the block, and make the tackle in the backfield. Stopping big Curtis Stevens. Scott Armstrong is checked back into the football game. Second down 11 on the 19-yard line for Rutgers. Here in the third quarter at the Meadowlands. Scott Ernie to throw. It is complete to Matt Prescott, the tailback. And Prescott is drilled right in front of the Florida bench after a short gain on the play. Kerry Watkins, a freshman out of Pensacola, makes the hit. And there's a penalty going against the Scarlet Knights. Which the indication is that it's uh, for a hold or personal foul. Scott Armstrong accepting the penalty right there. Nice to see Scott back on the field after evidently he had a pinch in his shoulder, a bruised shoulder, but he's back out there playing here in the third quarter. Ben lies back to the nine-yard line. It was for holding half the distance to the goal. Late in the fourth quarter, Jim and I will pick the Mid-State Federal Player of the Game. At the end of the season, the scholarship will be awarded to the university in honor of the Mid-State Federal Player of the Game. Second down, 20 on the 10-yard line. As Ernie looks at uh, Florida's defense, Gators trying to put that pressure on. The give off goes to Matt Prescott, and Prescott trying to turn it outside. Doesn't get very far, maybe to the 13-yard line before Moten and Armstrong tackle him for Florida. The Scarlet Knights of Rutgers open with a win over Boston College 11-9. They tied Kentucky 16-all, beat Cincinnati 48-28, beat Syracuse 16-10, and we're beaten by Penn State 31 to 6. Florida beat Kent State last week 52 to 9. Second win of the season. The first one came August 30th against Georgia Southern 38 to 14. Ernie's looking and throws and it is complete to the 38 yard line to Matt Prescott and he caught that ball in a crowd of Gators. Adrian White jumps over Prescott, trying to go for the interception, taking the gamble right here instead of knocking it down. Watch Adrian White. He's trying to go for the ball, but in doing so, he allowed Prescott to catch the football. So it's first and 10 on the 39. Florida leading by a score of 9 to nothing. 11-20 to play third quarter. That was the longest completion of the day, Jim Gallagher. 24 yards. Ernie again has the time, goes long, almost intercepted by Kerry Watkins, intended for Roy Hoover, the split end on the right side. Hoover there playing like he was the defensive back and Adrian White was the wide receiver. That's what you have to do in those situations. You can't let that defensive back simply catch the football, so you knock it away from him. We look at the uh, Florida coaching staff. Second and 10 at the 39. As the 
Gator D. They've got three down linemen. And the give off on the counter goes to Mike Body, And he rips it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Pat Moore, a freshman from Pensacola, Florida. The tackler for the University of Florida. The Gators take next weekend off. And then November 1st, it'll be Auburn and Gainesville. November the 8th, Georgia at Jacksonville. November the 15th, Kentucky at Kentucky. And November 29th, it'll be the Seminoles at FSU. Third down conversions. There you see the records of the two teams this afternoon. It's third and two on the 47 for Rutgers. And here is Scott Ernie. And he throws, trying to go over the top. It goes as incomplete. It was intended for Eric Young. And goes as incomplete. That brings up fourth down. And the Gators get another shot at the football. Ernie was trying to hit uh, their leading receiver, Eric Young, right there. The Gators in zone coverage, incomplete. Matt O'Connell, four punts for just under 40 yards per kick. Kerry Watkins is deep, and Steve Loden is the up receiver for Florida. It's fourth and two at the 47, and O'Connell is standing on the 33. He gets it off high and booms it. And it goes into the end zone. Well, i got to congratulate the Rutgers special teams. They were doing a heck of a job on that. Number two, Miller, a defensive back, was really down there. Uh, that's also Darren Sellis. 61 yards that ball went from the line of scrimmage. I think it's 54. 54? But close. no matter what, <laughs> <laughs> no matter what, anything over 40 is super. First and 10 at the 20-yard line for the Gators, Rodney Brewer. Lives in Zellwood, went to Apopka High School, very highly recruited. Also an excellent baseball player, Rodney throws. He's got Ricky Natillo, and Ricky makes a completion, drops the football, and fumbles the football, and they're blowing the ball dead at the 31-yard line, and Rutgers gets the football. So the Scarlet Knights get a break right now. Sean Washington, number three. Watch Sean. He's on the coverage on Natil. Natil has the ball, but Washington strips it from him after the reception, and Rutgers comes up with a big turnover. Alec Hoke is the guy who made the recovery. It's first and ten at the 32 for Rutgers, and they're in Florida territory, driving on the Gators. Florida going with three down linemen. And here is the pitch, and the pitch is... Going to 29, Matt Prescott, and Prescott is swarmed under by the Gator D at the 34-yard line. Well, what Ron Moten first got to make contact. What Rutgers is trying to do with that pitch is they send a motion man over to this side, uh, to the bottom of your screen, and that loosens up the Gator uh, cornerback, Kerry Watkins, so he can't come up and force that play as readily as he would, and it puts a lot of pressure on Ron Moten who then becomes responsible for turning that play inside. Ron Moten is doing a terrific job closing that corner down. He's done a great, great job this afternoon. Ernie passes. It is incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Greg Alvord, but falls is incomplete. And Ron Moten again doing a great job defensively for the Gators of Florida. He's had a great football game as we look also at big Ron D. Weston. Florida's had four first downs, Rutgers nine. The Gators Better. playing with five defensive backs right now. Obvious passing situation. They're in the nickel with the third and 11 situation at the 33-yard line. They've got their four down linemen trying to really put the pressure on young Scott Ernie, the sophomore quarterback for Rutgers. And he lets go, and it is incomplete. Eric Young juggling the football, but he was really being hit and bothered by Lewis Oliver and Scott Armstrong. And so that brings up a fourth down situation, which means that they are going to punt. Well, now the Gators uh, just a while earlier had come up with the interception and were not able to capitalize other than to get the three points on the field goal. This time Rutgers had a chance and they come up with a blank. Fourth and 11 at the 33. O'Connell is standing at the 47-yard line, waiting on the snap. And he gets it off high. 
Goes right into the end zone, so it'll come out to the 20. Ernie has been one for seven passing in the second half, so the Gator defense has been really pressuring him throughout the second half this afternoon. 9.21 to play in the third quarter. First and ten for the Gators on the 20, and they're driving against the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. They lead by a score of 9 to nothing. Now that was a big opportunity for Rutgers, and that Gator defense rose to the occasion and shut them down. No points after a big turnover like that. Rodney Brewer with the a little bit of wind out there, and the give-off is going to go to the up-back, Anthony Williams, the fullback, and he gets a couple of tough yards, maybe to the 22-yard line. Tyrone Stowe credited with the tackle. Ed Frazier and Stacy Simmons in at the wide receiver positions now for the University of Florida as Rodney Brewer talks to his troops, and he splits... Simmons far to the left, puts Frazier in the spot slot to the left side, and they go with an eye. Brewer out into the flat. He's got Simmons, and Simmons trying to turn back upfield and just caught at the 22-yard line. So that will bring up third down for the Gators as we look at the Scarlet Knight. He doesn't have a nickname. He's just the Scarlet Knight. Here's Rodney Brewer. Stacy Simmons has a lot of speed. This is a quick pass in the flat. They've got a bit of a blocking opportunity for Frazier right there, but he doesn't. He's not able to hit anyone. Third and seven at the 23 is the official situation. Eye formation with receivers left and right, and the give off is going to go to Massey, and he gets across the 25 yard line, but it's going to be far short of the first down bringing up the kicking team, and that will bring on Jamie McAndrew, the freshman from Colorado. Both offenses having a lot of problems this afternoon. The defenses are in control of the ballgame. So dropping back deep right now in a receiving position will be Brian Cobb. Fourth and four is the official at the 26. A flag on the play. As McAndrew gets it off and it gets across the 35, rolls down to the 30-yard line where it will be blown dead. And uh, Florida getting down there, and it was Beckerman, 35. Illegal procedure was the call. So there was a flag on that last play. They're going to back him up and make him, make him punt again. That wipes out a 44-yard kick by McAndrew. Well, let's see what that one mistake will do in terms of changing field position. Rutgers could have had the ball on their own 30. Let's see what that one mistake does in terms of field position after this punt. That's going to move the football back to the 21-yard line. And McAndrew is going to be standing back at about the 6, waiting on the snap. It'll be 4th and 9. McAndrew gets it away, sails high, and out of bounds in front of the University of Florida bench. And let's see where they uh, spot it down. About a 22-yard difference in field position. Rutgers will have the ball inside the Gators' 50. Well, actually, they're going to be inside the 45. They're at the 43-yard line. So Rutgers gets excellent field position with a score nine to nothing in Florida leading. Penalties for Rutgers this afternoon, five for 34, and for the Gators, two for 10. Split backfield behind Ernie, and he drops the throw for the Scarlet Knights on first down. Throws out into the flat, almost picked off by the University of Florida's number two, Adrian White, but there were flags on the field. And it looks like the call is gonna go against the Scarlet Knights. Well, they were trying to throw the screen out to the left side, but some of the offensive linemen were caught holding on the play. Adrian White had a tremendous shot at that football. He'd still be running. <laughs> Could have run right out the end of the end zone. He'll be thinking about that one for a few weeks. They march it back to the 47-yard line into Rutgers territory. It is for holding. 
So here is a look at it again. Yeah, he just literally uh, tackled Adrian White, I believe, at the line of scrimmage. That takes it to the 47-yard line, so it'll be first and 20 for the Scarlet Knights. Seven minutes, 11 seconds to play third quarter. Gators up, nine to zip. And Scott Ernie looks at the Florida D. He gives off to Matt Prescott, and Prescott, good yardage as he gets to the 40-yard line, but another flag on the play. Ernie is 10 for 24 for 88 yards this afternoon. Oliver and Armstrong, the tacklers for the Gators, and this time the call, it looks like, is going against the University of Florida. Offsides against Florida declined, and field position will put the football at the 39-yard line of the Gators. The Scarlet Knights in possession. It'll be second down and six. Seven minutes to go in the third quarter. They're trailing nine to nothing. Florida trying to sit on the lead. They're leading by the three field goals from the toe of Jeff Dawson. The give off goes to Matt Prescott, and Prescott stacked up at the line. Gator D getting tough in there. Keith Williams, the left tackle, makes the hit for Florida. Keith Williams playing with a sore ankle this afternoon, too. He's not at full speed. Six minutes and 32 seconds to play third quarter. More pressure on that Gator defense right now. Third and four, we're calling it. Prescott. 12 carries this afternoon, and what an afternoon he's having for himself, too. Done very well running against Florida as Scott Ernie to throw and does, and it is complete to his tight end, and he gets to the 20-yard line. Bruce Campbell catching the football, the 6'4", 225-pound junior, Ron Moten and Lewis Oliver make the tackle for Florida. So that moves the football to the 20. Ron Moten was on the coverage man for man with Bruce Campbell, and Campbell... Did a nice job with this out route right there. Just got one step on Ron Moten, and Ernie delivered the ball perfectly. 17-yard gain for the Scarlet Knights puts them in a threatening position right now with less than six minutes to play in the third quarter, first and 10 at the 20. And the give-off is going to go to Curtis Stevens, and he hits it in there for a quick yard on the play. After this week's Florida game, the Scarlet Knights have Army next week. Then they're at Louisville November 1st. They play West Virginia on November 8th. That's a home game. They're at Pittsburgh on November 15th. And they take on Temple on November 22nd. And that is a home game. Keith Williams, again, doing a fine job at the line of scrimmage. Almost coughed that ball up right there with his tackle. Second and eight at the 18-yard line. As we look at the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers driving on Florida. On the counter, Curtis Stevens carries the football. And that was sniffed out by Florida. And they make the hit. Keith Williams again leading the charge. Scott Armstrong. Here comes the draw. A little bit of a draw trap. But Scott Armstrong is right there. Todd Gatlin is in the game. Keith Williams making the tackle. Third and 11 on the 21-yard line now for Rutgers. Four minutes, 39 seconds to play third quarter. Rolling out is Ernie, looking to find somebody open. Hangs onto the football, comes out of bounds here along the near sideline as taking him out Armstrong and Jeff Roth for Florida. So that means that they bring, they're going to bring their field goal unit on on fourth down, and the kicker will be Doug Geisler. It will come from the, about the 28-yard line. On fourth and 12 from the 22, the kick will come from the 28-yard line, and O'Connell will be the holder. Waiting for the snap. His foot is into it, and it is good. And so the score is now Florida 9. And the Scarlet Knights 3 will be right back. And so now the kickoff coming from Rutgers. We've got to check that on the name. It's Doug Giesler. 
uh, who is the gentleman who kicked the field goal. We mispronounced it Geisler, but it is Doug Geisler. He gets ready to move to the football now and kick it off for Rutgers. They have just put a field goal on the board to make the score 9-3. to three. Kerry Watkins, and he takes it at the 14, the 15-yard line, the 20, the 25-yard line, and his ride takes him out at the 30. So Florida gets the football with good field position. Sean Washington took him out for Rutgers. The Gators now trying to get something going offensively. Four minutes, 24 seconds to play in the third quarter. At scoring drive, seven plays, 21 yards. Possession time, 247. Doug Giesler's 38-yard field goal did the job. Gators still searching for some offensive fireworks right here as we're winding down in the third quarter. Rodney Brewer gone all the way at quarterback this afternoon. And pitches. His pitch goes to Octavius Gould, and Gould turns upfield. But he is met by the left side of the Rutgers linebacking and free safety court. Tyrone Stowe and Derek Baker make the tackle for the Scarlet Knights. Rutgers playing with a lot of enthusiasm right now. That three points gave their defense a bit more encouragement. They're only at the ball game by six. Touchdown and an extra point, and they're ahead. So that uh, Rutgers defense is fired up on the field right now. Second and eight at the 33. Anthony Williams, the up back as they go with the eye. They've got receivers left and right. And this is Hodges, 10 in motion to the bottom of your screen. And again, it's Octavius Gould, and he goes to the 35-yard line. So just gets maybe two and a half pretty tough yards as Paul Halata makes the hit uh, along with Andre Cox and Matt. Matt Bachman. Rutgers really crowding that line of scrimmage on first and second down. Stopping that Gator running game. Now Gould is 15 for 55 this afternoon. Ricky Natiel has checked in. It's third down and five at the 35 yard line. Eye formation for the Gators. Rodney Brewer to throw. Unloads and it is complete to Natil at the 48 yard line. Ricky Natil, the rocket, catching the football. Sean Washington makes the tackle. Well, Ricky Natil's speed enables him to get down the field and cut across that middle. Right now, Rodney Brewer has plenty of protection up front. Natil comes slanting across. The Gators penetrating inside Rutgers ter territory. They picked up 17 yards, but Natil limped off the field. First and 10 at the 47-yard line. Frazier split to the bottom of your screen, number one. Rodney Brewer hands off to Octavius Gould, who makes a lot of yardage on his own to the 41-yard line. Harry Swain and Tyrone Stowe combined for Rutgers defense. Two minutes and 30 seconds to play in the third quarter. Florida up 9-3. Let's take a look at Gould. Big blocks up front. Bob Sims, David Williams, number 73, the outstanding young offensive tackle, doing a nice job up front. On second down five off the 42, Rodney Brewer hands off to Octavius Gould, and Gould is inside the 40 to the 38-yard line, but not enough for the first down. Charlie Wright, number 60, the offensive guard, doing a nice job leading that play. Bachman and Duffy combined for the stop for the Scarlet Knights. It's going to be very close. Looks like we're going to have a measurement. It's a very critical series for the University of Florida with Rutgers coming back and getting on the board. Uh, the Gators are up 9-3. to three. Uh, The Rutgers defense came out supercharged up on this particular series, but now the Gators uh, had that nice completion to Ricky Natiel and they're moving the ball effectively. Inches. Inches is all it's going to take for Florida on this third down situation less than a yard with the ball at they call it the 37 it's between the 37 and the 38 yard line 155 to play in the third period Florida two and four on the year losses coming to Miami number one Alabama number two in the nation Mississippi State in the top 20 and LSU another ranked team here once again is Rodney Brewer on third down short yardage straight up the middle and let's see if he's got it. Well, I think he got it, the but Gators, he sure was hit. My the Gators goodness. signal he's got it and Scarlet Knights signal he has it. I always like the way that the defensive backs make the call already. 
Uh, it seems like they got good penetration at the point of attack right there, but he sure was kissed on the lips by one of the linebackers. Rodney Brewer doing a nice job this afternoon under consideration for our Mid-State Federal Player of the Game, as is Adrian White, Lewis Oliver, Ron Moten, Clifford Charlton on that Gator defense. It is a first down for the Gators. So they sustain their drive at the 37-yard line of Rutgers with 1.45 to play in the third period. Very important to make something happen with this drive right here. Rutgers did have the momentum there for a while. Here in the third quarter, the Gators have a chance to get it back. Gators have a great following that are here for the game in the orange and blue. Rodney Brewer rolling on play action. Throws a quick one. It is incomplete. It was knocked down. Tom Duffy was putting the pressure on, but George Banco, 71, is the guy that got a big paw on it and took it down. A 6'4", 265-pound sophomore. This is very similar to the play that Rodney had intercepted last year when uh, Rutgers defensive lineman intercepted a screen pass like this. Banco's there almost coming up with a grab. He doesn't see many balls coming at him. You know no. <laughs> Second and 10 at the 37-yard line as Rodney Brewer takes the football, hands to Octavius Gould, who goes to the 36. Tom Duffy makes the stop. Short yardage play for Octavius Gould. Duffy looks like he was hurt on the play there, too. He might have uh, hurt his wrist or his arm. He went out earlier in the game and then came back in. We'll be back with more, but first, time out for these messages. Third down nine at the 36 for the Gators of Florida, leading nine to three. 44 seconds left to play third quarter. Rodney Brewer, number 19, rolls out. He's being chased, going long, going for the end zone. He's got Ricky Natillo. Touchdown, Ricky Natillo open in the end zone, catches the football as Rodney Brewer throws a strike to put the Gators with a touchdown on the board. Rutgers, Jim, comes with an all-out blitz. Sean Washington is man for man on Ricky Natil. Rodney Brewer had the ability to escape that blitz, roll out, bought himself a little more time, and Sean Washington actually fell down, enabling Natil to get behind him for the touchdown catch. The Gators have called a timeout. They're going to go for two. They have waved the kicking team off the field. So they're going for two. 34 seconds left to play in the third quarter. All right, here we come with the all-out blitz. Look at Tyrone Stowe getting picked up by Anthony Williams right there. Brewer buys a little more time by rolling out. By this time, Natil has escaped Sean Washington, who actually fell down. Natil backs into the end zone for the six. So the Gators have a touchdown. They lead now 15 to three. That was an excellent job by the young backs picking up the blitz. The big offensive lineman shutting down the defensive lineman on their pass rush. Rodney Brewer had a chance to take two or three steps to the outside because he knew Natil was man for man with Sean Washington. And then when Washington fell down, it was a fantastic opportunity for the Gators to come up with a big six. So now the Gators are going to go for two. They've got Octavius Gould and Anthony Williams in the backfield. Gould 31 and Anthony Williams 36. Ricky Natil 89. As you look at these happy Florida fans. Slot offense would be to the left side. And a split backfield behind Rodney Brewer as they go for two. And Brewer looks, throws for the end zone. For Natil, it is incomplete. Derek Baker knocks it down, number 19, to do a good job for Rutgers. The score, 15-3. to three, Florida leads. We'll be right back. <laughs> 34 seconds to play in the third period. The University of Florida Gators are leading right now as they are up in front of Rutgers and 36,781 fans are here today. Again, Jim Gallagher, a big series in terms of momentum. Rutgers had gotten back into this ball game. Uh, they'd never been out of it, actually, but it was 9-3. to three. 
and the Gator offense was able to come back, put some points on the board. Happiness for Albert is a touchdown. 15 to 3 the score as John David Francis boots off deep and it'll be taken by Rutgers and run out across the 20, the 25 and up to the 28 yard line is Eric Young from New Brunswick, New Jersey very close to where we are right now as Young brings it up, Lang, Bill Lang makes the hit number 24 for Florida first and 10 with 29 seconds to play in the third period. Here are the Scarlet Knights. As we look at Scott Ernie, the quarterback for the Knights, rolls out, throws, it is incomplete. Intended for Curtis Stevens on a little flare out to the left side, but falls is incomplete. Pat Moore and Adrian White, the guys with a good D, for the University of Florida. Nine plays, 69 yards, possession 355. Ricky Natheels, 36-yard pass from Rodney Brewer, gives it the touchdown. Two-point conversion was no good. Second down 10 at the 29-yard line for the Scarlet Knights. And the give-off on the counter goes to Mike Body. He gets to maybe the 32-yard line before he's brought down. Todd Gatlin, inside linebacker, making the hit for Florida. That'll probably be the last play of the third quarter as we wind down to seven, six seconds left here in the third quarter. Looking at Dick Anderson, head coach at Rutgers, and that is the end of the third quarter with the score. Florida 15 and Rutgers 3, and we'll be right back. Back with the final quarter of action from the Meadowlands. Third down, seven. Ball on the 32-yard line for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. As we look at the fans, over 36,000 of them here today. And I don't know how many are Gators, but I'll tell you, it's got to be close to half. And I think we just wit witnessed the most disorganized singing of We Are the Boys of Old Florida that we've ever <laughs> seen. <laughs> well, some of them haven't heard it for a while. Need that student section there to sing it right. No leadership out there in the fans today. No. Scott oh! Ernie's ball is in the air. They say that he was in the motion of passing, so it's an incomplete pass. That was Clifford Charlton making a great play for the Gators of Florida and getting some help there too for Mr. Henry Brown. Now there's Jeff Roth coming up the middle. Pat Pinner fighting, and who is that? Clifford Charlton, I believe, coming from the outside. Punting situation on fourth and seven from the 32, and Matt O'Connell has averaged 41 yards per kick this afternoon. O'Connell gets it off, and Kerry Watkins watches it roll, and it is going to be blown dead at the 16-yard line. Glenn Miller, number two, gets down as Albert dances. I don't know if he's dancing to Glenn Miller music or not, but he's doing some dancing. Stacy Simmons uh, checks into the ball game. Now we saw some people walking like that on Times Square last night. Didn't we? <laughs> yeah, I'm dressed just about like that too. <laughs> well, that was a smart play by Kerry Watkins. You know, don't pick up a crazily bouncing ball. If he touches it, it's a free ball, so he got away from it. That's a 52-yard boot. First and 10 at the 16-yard line with the I formation. And the give-off is going to go to Octavius Gould, who is brought out at the 14-yard line. So he loses a little bit on there. Alec Hoke, a uh, big guy from Princeton, New Jersey, at the outside linebacker, 69, makes the tackle. We look at the Gators. Fourteen minutes and twenty seconds to play in the game. Florida sitting up on a fifteen to three lead. Second and twelve on the fourteen. Rodney Brewers give Anthony Williams. Anthony stacked up. 
as he hits to the line of scrimmage before he's brought down. Tyrone Stowe, the inside linebacker, makes the tackle for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. At least 10 helmets on that tackle. That's what you look for in terms of a defense. As many men as you can hitting that football carrier. Third and 12 on the 14-yard line now for the Gators. They're leading by 12 points. Up back would be Anthony Williams and Gould dots the eye as Rodney Brewer is being chased out of the pocket. Rodney's going to have to hang on to it and gets up to the 23-yard line. But he's going to be short of the first down. Matt Bachman makes the tackle. He's the inside linebacker. This Rutgers defense, very impressive. They are, they're not giving much up to the Gators this afternoon. Banco's in on, uh, on the rush, forcing Rodney Brewer to run. McAndrew, four punts, averaging 26.5 yards per kick. Now we look at number 20, Brian Cobb, dropping back. McAndrew gets that one off, and boy, was he under some pressure, too. Here it rolls, and it is taking a Florida roll. And they're letting it roll, too, down to the 30-yard line where it will be blown dead. Good job by Jerry Anderson's special teams. And uh, Rutgers takes over the football first and 10 at their own 30-yard line. Previously this afternoon, Rutgers had line 10 men up on the line of scrimmage, but many of them dropped back. That was a 46-yard boot by McAndrew. This time they come for it. 10 men coming at Jamie McAndrew. He concentrates on that football and gets off an excellent punt. So it'll be first and 10 at the 31-yard line. Scott Ernie throws, and he gets Matt Prescott complete to the 32-yard line. Ron Moten and Scott Armstrong make the tackle for the University of Florida. Second down five on the 36 for the Scarlet Knights. Coach Jim Dickey and Coach Ty Young got to be... Very proud of their linebackers. They uh, excellent play out there this afternoon by those Florida defensive linebackers. The give off to Matt Prescott straight up the middle hits to the 40-yard line. Jeff Roth makes the tackle for the orange and blue of Florida. Short of the first down, but they've got it in good field position with a third and about one situation. The ball right near the 40-yard line, right on the 40. It's getting colder, but Galen Hall shows no effects. Mr. Cool on the sidelines over there. He probably doesn't even realize that the temperature has dropped rather severely. He doesn't, but we're standing here with overcoats on <laughs> in the press box. Third and one on the 40-yard line now for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers as Scott Ernie gives, and the give-off goes to Matt Prescott. He's got the first down, so the Knights keep their drive alive. They trail 15-3. With 11-21 to play in the ball game, Jeff Roth makes the tackle for Florida. And there's plenty of time left in this fourth quarter, over 11 minutes, and Rutgers can get back in this game in a hurry if they get in the end zone. And this drive is very critical to their offense. First and 10 at the 45-yard line for the Scarlet Knights. They split Eric Young out to the left, eye formation. Scott Ernie's pass is blocked. Getting in there to put a big hand up is Rondi Weston, the big sophomore from Belle Glade. And somebody is down on the field right now. Looks like John Coots' uh, tackle. And we'll be right back after this. So we look at Ron on the field, and he's got to be chilly. Second down and 10 at the 45-yard line for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Give off on the counter play, goes to Lipset, comes to the near side, and gets to about the 47-yard line. Scott Armstrong makes the tackle for Florida. At least every other play, Scott Armstrong's made the tackle this afternoon. A ter tremendous ball game by the young man from Ocala. Well, he's had a great career at the University of Florida, done very, very well. Ocala Forest High School. Third down and seven on the 48-yard line for the Scarlet Knights as Scott Ernie looks to throw and does, and it is incomplete. Tight end, Bruce Campbell, a little bit low, 
coverage man is Todd Gatlin, the sophomore from Fort Walton Beach Choctaw High School. And that brings on, once again, Mr. O'Connell. Well, we mentioned that was a very important series, but the Gator defense just shut Rutgers down. Will not allow him to get back in this ball game. Fourth and seven at the 48. O'Connell standing at the 34. As he waits on the snap. Gets it off high. Loden calls for the fair catch at the 24-yard line. And so Florida gets the football first and ten. I want to mention that Gator basketball is back and the team is ranked in the preseason top 20 in several publications for the first time ever. First tip-off is next month, so order your tickets now from the Gator ticket office. Call toll-free in the state of Florida, 1-800-342-7851 or call 904-392-0664. Steve Loden from Marco Island, Florida, coming up with a fair catch at the short safety position on that last punt. First and 10 on the 23 for the Gators. And the giveoff is going to go to Anthony Williams. Nice yardage to the near side. Still on his feet downfield. And right in front of the Florida bench takes out at the 47-yard line. Anthony Williams with a carry. Lewis Morrow, the strong safety, brings him out for Rutgers. Big Anthony Williams almost breaks this one loose. Look at the hurdle right there over the cornerback. Just steps out of bounds and is knocked, knocked to the turf out of bounds. First down for the Gators. Eh? At the 41-yard line as we look at Brett Wickman. He is. That's really a sad situation. Sad situation is right. Octavius Gould gets the carry. And it is Octavius going for about a yard before he's brought down. Uh, Brett Wickman has been such a credit to his school, his football team, his family. He's just been a great player here for it. A great, great sure hands from uh, Gainesville High School, or rather from uh, Gainesville High School, Oak Hall, one of the smaller schools. And he's come on, done very well. Great point average, 4.0. James Massey is now in the backfield. I mean, people really do make 4.0s. Anthony Williams still on his feet. Down to the 44-yard line of Rutgers. Derek Baker and Sean Washington bring him down. But there was a flag on the play, a hold against Florida, and it is going to cost the Gators. And we've also got a player down. I think Anthony Williams is down. We'll be back with more, but first, time out for these messages. <laughs> We're back at the Meadowlands. Second down and 19 on the 32 for the Gators here in the fourth quarter. They're sitting on the lead 15 to 3 against the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Rodney Brewer throwing. Oh, he has the tee incomplete. Oh, was he ever hit? He really took a hit from Derek Baker, the free safety. What a hit Derek Baker put on Ricky Natiel, but Ricky bounced right up and heading back to that huddle. Clapping his hand says, throw it to me again. Third and a cab ride, Jim Gallagher. 19 which, yards to go. Which here would cost you maybe $20, huh? <laughs> For 19 yards is right. <laughs> but a lot of thrills and spills along the way. Third and 19 at the 32. As the Gators come out of the huddle, a split backfield behind Rodney Brewer. And you know that they're going to be going for the home run ball. Rodney's under a lot of pressure. Throws a quick one out there. He's got James Massey. And Massey fights to the 40 across the 40 to the 41 yard line before Rutgers uh, is able to drag him down and it's Darren Sellis and Paul Halata was the guy that put the pressure on the passer. Well they wanted to invite that pressure it was a screen pass and Massey almost broke it loose. Jimmy Davis playing a fine job this afternoon. Big David Williams at the tackle position. Bob Sims, Charlie Wright Frank McC McCarthy. McAndrew gets it off high. It's going to be Cobb, 20, who looks at it for the Scarlet Knights, and he just keeps on looking at it. And what a Florida roll that took down to the six-yard line. So the ball got a lot of roll on it and goes down to the six-yard line. So McAndrew got his foot into it. 
and it hit the right way and rolled down to the six yard line so that means that Rutgers is really going to be in the backyard that's the kind of roll you want to get in an, in Atlantic City right <laughs> you get a roll like that you wouldn't have to work for a living that was a 53 yarder first and 10 at the six yard line Rutgers trailing 15 to 3, 8 26 to play in the game. Scott Ernie's gone all the way at quarterback. His call goes to Matt Prescott, who carries it across the five to about the six yard line. And Webby Burnett, a freshman from Pensacola High School, making the tackle for the Gators. Well, he came to the University of Florida as an inside linebacker, and they moved him to the nose guard position to help out Jeff Roth on occasion. Matt Prescott having a great game this afternoon. It's second and four at the 12. Off the eye formation, and the give-off goes to Prescott, but Florida really greets him there. And we're talking about Henry Brown first. Henry getting a lot of help from the rest of the D. Henry again playing with a broken finger very difficult when you're on defense and have a cast like apparatus on your hand to reach out and grab which is what you have to do when you're on defense but Henry is really playing tough out there this afternoon broken hand and all third down and three on the 13 with seven minutes and 14 seconds to play Ernie from Rutgers throws he may have the first down to Matt Prescott out of the backfield Scott Armstrong making the tackle for Florida Looks like he's got it. So Rutgers has moved the football out to the 17-yard line now, where it'll be first down. 7.09 to play. A little bit of sun beginning to come back out again. It was overcast for a while. It has been chilly this afternoon, at least chilly for us. And Ernie goes overhead, going long. It's going to be intercepted by Florida. The Gators intercept Jarvis Williams picks it off. Brian Cobb, the flanker, was the intended receiver. Jarvis Williams, the third leading interceptor in the Southeastern Conference. I thought they might actually call a offensive interference right there. Brian Cobb was pushing on Jarvis Williams, trying to free himself. As you see Ernie right here with a play-action pass, and he's going to be looking for Cobb, and Cobb has already pushed on Jarvis Williams, but Jarvis comes up with the football regardless. First and 10 at the 49-yard line, and here is Rodney Brewer with the I formation, and his give-off is going to go to Dwayne Ferguson. Ferguson maybe gets a tough yard, but um, right in the middle there, that defensive front line, George Banco's first there to hit him, and here's Jarvis Williams, as you see, leads the University of Florida with four interceptions this year. And doing very well in the Southeastern Conference, too. And he'll get some All-American mention next year before he leaves the University of Florida. No question about that. Second and nine at the 50 for the Gators. Anthony Williams is the up back. And the give-off is going to go to James Massey. 48-yard line of Rutgers. It'll be third and seven. George Bankos again making the hit along with Tyrone Stowe. Six minutes to play. Florida sitting on the lead, 15 to 3. Obviously, you can't relax. You can never relax when a, an opponent's not put away, and the Gators can put Rutgers away, away right now with a long scoring drive. Darrell Willard, 21, is in the slot right now. Florida's had eight first downs today. And it goes to Stacy Simmons. Stacy Simmons still on his feet and threads down the sideline out in front of the Gator bench at about the 40-yard line for the first down. Derek Baker, 19, takes him out for the Scarlet Knights. Willard does a nice job here throwing the block that frees Stacy Simmons. Derek Baker is eventually going to make the tackle. As you see, Willard right there throwing the nice block that freed his teammate. First and 10 at the 39-yard line now for the Florida Gators as we look at the defenders, and they have been super this afternoon. The give off to Massey. Massey, maybe a yard or so. Rutgers pretty stiff inside. Tyrone Stowe. They don't get tired in the last quarter. They're, they're still ready to play. 
That's a credit to their coach, and it's a credit to to them as individuals. You're never let up, and especially on a cool Saturday afternoon, these are young bodies out there, and these kids are in great shape, and uh, they could probably play another ball game without giving up right, <laughs> right. right after this one. Woolard splits to the left, and Ricky Nateel to the right. The I formation for Rodney Brewer, second and nine from the 38-yard line. And Rodney Brewer rolls to throw under a little pressure. Quick one to Anthony Williams coming out of the backfield. And Anthony steps out at the 31-yard line. And Tyrone Stowe, the inside linebacker, and George Bankos was the guy putting the pressure on. Stowe took him out. A little bit of a bootleg action there, freeing the fullback in the flat. The Gators love that play. Get the ball to the fullback in the flat. Let him pick up a quick five or six. Third down two at the 31-yard line. 4.49 to play. Rodney Brewer with the eye. He is 10 for 18, 150 yards this afternoon. And Brewer rolling on play action, hangs on to it, and rolling out, and throws a quick one, and it is incomplete. It was intended for Anthony Williams, but falls as incomplete. But... Um, we may have a penalty on the play. While we wait and see what happens, let us tell you that Mid-State Federal Savings and Loan is performance-minded and is proud to recognize outstanding individual performance with Mid-State's Most Valuable Player of the Game Award. Physical fitness, keen mental concentration, and a true spirit to win is what Gator football is all about today and in the future. And so Robert McGinty gets the shot at the field goal from the 37-yard line, it's a 47-yard li- attempt. It has the distance, and it is no good as it goes wide. The hold was by Steve Ewing, and the snap came from Walter Bird, and uh, McGinty is a young man from Jacksonville, Florida, Fletcher High School. So the score remains 15-3, to 4.37 to play in the game. First and 10 at the 31-yard line will be the situation as the Knights of Rutgers take over. Going all the way at quarterback this afternoon for the Scarlet Knights is Scott Ernie, a sophomore from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Throws and it is incomplete. Intended for Bruce Campbell, the tight end off the right side. False is incomplete. Adrian White was the pressure man for Florida. Pressure is... That's the only right. nice way to say that, isn't it? Adrian loves to hit those big tight ends or anybody coming out in his area. Anybody's live when they come into his area. Anybody that's not in a policeman's uniform, he'll, <laughs> he'll hit them. Second and 10 at the 31-yard line. The situation as the Knights trailing 15-3. to You want to try to get something going here in the fourth quarter, and Florida wants to protect the lead. 4.33 to play. The give-off on the counter is going to go to the fullback Curtis Stevens. Loose ball, and let's see. The Gators might have recovered it. The Gators do recover it. Gators Webby Burnett, number 46, recovers the football for the Gators. And so Florida takes the football over now, and they have good field position. Curtis Stevens gets the ball on the trap. A giant hole right there. Let's see who strips the ball from him. That's Scott Armstrong and Jarvis Williams knock it loose, but Webby Burnett, the nose guard, is hustling down the field to come up with a fumble recovery. First and 10 at the 48-yard line for the Gators, and they're on their side of the 50 as the pitch goes to Octavius Gould, and he turns right to the line of scrimmage before Harry Swain, defensive tackle, makes the hit for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. A little over four minutes to play in the ball game. And Rutgers has had five turnovers, Florida two this afternoon, which I'm sure is very frustrating for Dick Anderson, who we saw just a moment ago. Uh, Florida's not had the mistakes in this game. They have been penalized very little, and they've had just the two turnovers. Octavius Gould again, and he goes into Rutgers territory to the 49, but it was not easy yardage tough to get those three. Alec Hoke, the outside linebacker, the tackler for the Knights. Now this will be a big win for the University of Florida with Auburn War Eagles and Georgia Bulldogs coming up on the schedule. Significant for Galen Hall. He's had 19 wins, so this would make him 
25 and 1. 3rd and 7 at the 49 for the Gators as Rodney Brewer goes with a slot. Daryl Woolard would be the slot back. A lone setback, Anthony Williams behind Rodney. And Rodney throws. He's got Octavius Gould to the 40 for the first down. Less than three minutes to play in the ball game. Gators as the Gators pick up that first down. Right, Jim. They come out with three wideouts, one of which is Octavius Gould, the tailback. Sean Washington makes the hit for Rutgers. Octavius clearly uh, capable of being a wide receiver, as is Tony Lomack. Don't uh, be surprised to see Tony Lomack playing wide receiver now that uh, Brett Weckman is hurt. First and 10 at the 40-yard line for the Gators as Rodney Brewer looks at the D and hands off to Octavius Gould. He tries it left side as he cuts back, looking for the daylight, and gets to the 35-yard line. Harry Swain makes the tackle. 2.28 to play. Florida 15 and Rutgers 3. Here are the Gators now with Stacy Simmons 28 and Ed Frazier, or rather uh, Eric Hodges 10 is the slot man. Rodney Brewer give off to Octavius Gould and Gould goes to the 31 yard line. On second down and four from the 34, Matt Bachman and Tyrone Stowe, the tacklers. And there's a timeout on the field for Rutgers with 1.47 to play in the game. We'll be right back. And Jim and I have selected as the Mid-State Federal Player of the Game, Scott Armstrong. The senior from Ocala Forest High School, 6'1", 235. What a great job he's done today and a fine career. He's had it floored. It's third and two on the 32. Octavius Gould trying to pick up the first down, and he doesn't get to the corner and turn it. Alec Hoke brings him down along with Tyrone Stowe. So they're going to be short of the first down. And we'll be right back after these messages. Octavius Gould, total of 119 yards rushing and receiving this afternoon on fourth down, gets the call and gets the first down for the Gators down close to the 20-yard line. Derek Baker, the free safety, makes the tackle as Octavius Gould makes the carry. By the way, Rodney Brewer is 12 for 19 for 160 yards, one touchdown, one interception this afternoon. Well, in the locker room, they call Octavius a homeboy today because he's back home. That's right. And he's doing a job, isn't he? He certainly has been super today. All season long. He's a terrific young freshman. Uh, University of Florida has a real catch with Octavius Gould. They've got some great young running backs. There's Octavius again at the carry. Short yardage on first and ten to call it the uh, line of scrimmage. Maybe he did get back to the line of scrimmage. He might have lost a little on that one. George Banco's defensive tackle makes the hit. A minute to two to play in the game. And Florida sitting on that 15-3 to three lead. Ferguson 38 checks in as we look at Dick Anderson. Yeah. 
and Galen Hall, teammates at Penn State in the early 1960s. Rodney Brewer gives off to Ferguson, and Ferguson is really hit as they get right in on him. The guys from Penn State, Paul Alata, first guy to make a pop on him. 32 seconds to play in the ball game. As we go to third down, 11. And Rodney Brewer comes over to talk with the head coach, Galen Hall, and also the uh, offensive coaches, see what the situation is on the field. And the defensive captains have talked with Dick Anderson on the Rutgers sideline. Florida takes this coming week off, and then November 1st, it is Auburn in Gainesville, and that is the last home game in Gainesville for the 1986 season. Georgia is next in Jacksonville November 8th, then it's at Kentucky November 15th, and at Florida State on November 29th. Third and 11 for Florida with 32 seconds to play. Ferguson is the up back. The snap goes to Brewer. The give goes to Octavius Gould, trying to turn it outside. He's at the 20. He's inside the 10 and down to the 8-yard line before he is stopped. Derek Baker makes the tackle. 24 seconds to play, and he is inside the 10 with a first down. Almost in the end zone right there as they ran a bit of a lag draw. Rutgers expecting perhaps the pass. And now the clock's going to wind down and the Gators will walk away with a 15-3 victory over the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. The clock is just ticking away. 3, 2, 1, and the University of Florida picks up the victory. Galen Hall goes over and shakes hands with former teammate Dick Anderson and Galen Hall gets his 20th victory as a head coach here at the University of Florida and the Gators take next week off and then it's Auburn on November the 1st as you see Galen come across the field and his Gators this afternoon defensively really rose to the occasion and offensively they were able to score with the three field goals of Jeff Dawson and the touchdown pass by Rodney Brewer to Ricky Natillo. Uh, Injury-wise, you can see that the uh, Gators are really fighting against that situation. They have lost Brett Wickman uh, probably for the season, I think officially for the season. And so he has been a great player for them, a great sure-handed guy to catch the ball when they really needed it. Um, he will be out. Some of the other injuries has hurt him. Kerwin Bell, of course, um, went out recently, and that brought on Rodney Brewer. Jeff Zimmerman is out. And you're talking about three great players there. Perhaps uh, Zimmerman and Kerwin Bell will be back for that big battle with Auburn at Florida Field. Uh, Gators fortunately have a week off. You, you look at the president of the University of Florida, Dr. Marshall Kreiser, and uh, he is talking with uh, some of the people on the field. A lot of Gators have come up for this, and there are a lot of Florida alums in the area. And um, Mr. Kreiser always likes to spread the word about the University of Florida. And we will be back with more from here in the Meadowlands, but right now we'll take time out for these messages. So here you look at uh, some happy Gator fans. It's Mark McGriff's dad, who's a member of the uh, Florida Sports Hall of Fame, and the Gators pick up the victory 15-3 to this afternoon at the Meadowlands, their first time to play in the Northeastern United States since meeting Villanova back in 1942, and a lot of Florida alums got the opportunity to come out and to uh, see the Gators play, and of course, a lot of Gator fans followed Florida up here. We'd like to uh, thank our spotters, Robert Salat and David Mosca, stats guy Stuart Silverman, and this afternoon, our end zone cameraman was Buzz Schwing, whose dad is one of the best-known guys in television sports production, one of the founders of the Mislu TV Network. So we've had a good crew with us today, and you see the names of all of these other people who made such pretty pictures for us and do such a great job. Well, we all will look forward to Auburn coming to Florida Field in two weeks. 
Gators getting a chance to rest up and get some healthy bodies back on that football field to take on the War Eagles. Well, of course, then the Georgia game coming up in Jacksonville on November the 8th. The Florida Gators have now picked up three wins against uh, four losses. And offensively this afternoon, some sparks. Uh, Octavius Gould having a fine afternoon. And also a nice touchdown pass from Rodney Brewer to Ricky Natiel. Jeff Dawson being uh, called on and been able to come through with the field goals when it was needed. And, of course, Albert the Alligator, what telecast would be would be a Florida telecast without Albert. And thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us. From the Meadowlands in New York, for Jim Yarbrough, I'm Jim Gallagher. Thanks for being with us. Goodbye. Florida football is brought to you by Armstrong Carpets, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Florida, the Florida Orange Growers, also by Dairy Farmers Incorporated, Florida's milk producers. By First Union Bank of Florida. Your Florida and South Georgia Ford dealers. Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Likes Meats. By Merrill Lynch. Scotty's. And by Sonny's Real Pit Barbecue.